Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. We're here on the Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea map and we're playing with Seasons. We've just had a rather wonderful short break. We've done a little bit of uh, surfing, a little bit of swimming. We even built a sandcastle, but now we need to head back and get on with our work. The thing is, if you don't give them straw, you get slurry coming from the cows. As soon as you give them straw, you no longer get any slurry. You only get uh, manure coming from them, piling up. So you've got these, you've got like it, two separate bits that you get from the cows. And so I'm sort of trying to decide if I go for cows, I could do that fairly early on. As soon as we've got some grass available to cut, we haven't got any grass available to cut yet. We need to allow it to grow a little bit. But as soon as we do have grass available to cut, we can put fresh grass in for the cows and then they've got food. Right? And that's that's all they need is they just we just need the cows and we need the grass. And we've already started with cows. We can then go on and we can make some hay in some of the fields because we've got quite a few fields that we'll be able to use just as meadows without actually ploughing them up. So we've got plenty of grass available to start off with. We could use, so do the whole meadow grass thing. And then uh, we could make a bit of hay as well. And we could also do some of the grass as silage. The only downside, I mean, whether we do bale silage or we do um, clamp silage, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the only downside to it all that I can see is that it's all meadows and we don't have any marked out fields and because we don't have any marked out fields it means that we're going to be um just a little bit behind um it's, it's it, it means that we've got to do everything manually where we can't use the hired help to do anything at all and it's really good being able to have the hired help sort of help us out with a few of these little tasks it does make a big difference now i'm thinking I'm going to go around this way just because I've got the camera angle on there and I'm sort of getting used to eyeing in on this side, he says. And this is where I go and make a complete pig's ear of this job. I don't want to get too close to the trees. So I do want to, I do want to sort of give them a bit of a wide berth here, like this. There. The reason I don't want to get too close is just for the hired help getting tangled up with trees. We know what hired help is like with trees. It's a bit of a jolly nuisance. So if I stay out like that all the way round, I think that's pretty good. There. And I'll go to there like that. Right. I think that's all right. And then in the winter, we could always come back over, cut those trees off, and um, turn the rest of it into field as well. I don't quite know at the moment. I'll decide that at some point in the future. I still haven't gone and got the AI vehicle extension, which is something that I would like to get. Some people have been telling me that I should be using cosplay on here. Um, Jimmy J and Duck Zorley in particular think that um, they use a lot of cosplay. Um, and they think I should also use cosplay. Personally, I've never really liked cosplay. I've never, in, I've never really got on all that well with it. I, I can sort of make it work, but I just don't like the feel of it. Whereas the AI vehicle extension, it just feels like a, a more natural process for me. So if I can get that, I know it's kicking around somewhere, and I will get that one ready. I want it ready for the harvest. For the rest of the work, I'm not really worried about. I like to use the standard hired help. Because for the most part, the standard hired help does do a reasonable job. The only thing that you can't... Ooh, okay, I'm drifting there. Uh, the only thing you can't do too well is the outside edges of the field. You do have to go round and sort of tidy those up yourself. But other than that, the standard game AI is pretty good. I, I do get on all right with it. Um, but the for doing the combining, the AI vehicle extension is... To my mind, it's an absolutely wondrous tool. It's absolutely amazing. It does everything that we could possibly want it to. It um, does the circles around the outside edge, and then you can very quickly switch it over, and you can start doing up and down the field. Uh, if you've got kind of a square-ish field, you can switch it off, and you can just go back to standard height help. 
um, with the AI vehicle extension, if you've got a big field with like a, a long curved edge, use the AI vehicle extension and instead of it um, going in dead straight lines, it follows the natural curve of the field and you do the entire field following its natural curve. I love that. I think that is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's such a cool thing. And that's why I like the AI vehicle extension. It allows you to sort of run things more naturally. But at the same time, you don't have to be a computer programmer to be able to set the thing up in the first place. You're setting out all the courses. You don't need to plot courses and plot routes and stuff like that. You just click the button and it goes and does it itself. It follows the edge of the field and follows the edge of the... Um, land that's already been worked and, and does it like that and that's the bit that I really like you don't have to do any setup work um, the bit with you know, it, it feels more natural it feels that basically you're just saying to the worker right you go and do that field and off he goes whereas course play you're programming it it feels like you, you you've stepped into the future with course play you're not actually getting a worker to go to work in your field what you're doing with course play is you've stepped 30 years into the future they've already started with autonomous driverless tractors and um, there's ones that don't even have a cab they're run completely via a robot and that's what you're doing with course play is you've got a robotic tractor and it's not doing anything other than um just following the pro you're, you're programming your robot tractor and then the robot tractor is going off and doing things that's great and all but I don't want to do all of my gameplay with robot tractors. I like tractors being driven by real people. And that's why I'm not so keen on the course play bit. And I much prefer the AI vehicle extension. So I know that there is a version of it available somewhere on GitHub. Apparently it hasn't been updated for quite a long time. Um, a lot of people think it's just about in its final stages. Uh... There may be one or two bugs with it, but in general, it's in pretty good shape. So, I will get it, and I will get it installed, and we will hopefully be able to use it for doing some harvest work. Um, a few people have said... What else were we talking about? Um, I said about using Stevie mods on this series, and I did say that I wanted to use some Stevie mods in the series... I'm not quite sure which ones I'll use and how I'll go about doing it. Some people have um, given feedback on that. You're not all keen on the idea of me using Stevie mods. Uh, it would appear that most of you would rather that instead of using the Stevie mods, I just got extra machines running. Um, you would rather, instead of running one combine that combines faster than usual and has a bigger grain capacity, you would rather I ran three combines that ran at normal speed and then sort of did the, the ferrying in between them. The only reason that I was going to use the Stevie mod for like doing something like that was because then you can set the combine going and you don't have to worry about it too much. You can go off and you can do other tasks as well. Using three combines, yeah, I can do that. If that's what people want, I could use the three combines instead. Um, the only downside to that is that you do have to spend more time focused on the combine running and uh, ferrying the grain in between them. You, you can't sort of take breaks to go off and do other tasks on the farm as well. And the reason for using the Stevie mod would be that it would break up the gameplay a little bit. You know, I'm not doing constantly the same thing all the time in the video like I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm at the moment, I mean, it's fortunate that we've got this disc plow that we're using, because if we didn't have this disc plow, this job would be taking a phenomenally long time. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm plowing up an enormous great big field, there's, there's no denying that, this, this field is absolutely huge, and for that, I'm very, very grateful. You know, in fact, we have just had the, um, Helper C has now finished his job. So we're going to go and see. Oh. Uh, I suppose technically he has finished his job. He's, well, he's, he's, he's done most of what he was supposed to do. He's gotten a bit tangled up there. But I think we can overlook that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this way. And I'm going to start him over on this side of this field. I'm going to let this one just start cultivating, uh, not cultivating, start planting this field here, 
And then when we're done with the ploughing, we'll come back and we will manually go around the edge of both of the fields. So you're going to go in there. And you're going to go along that little bit. Should reach the edge. Just. Just reach the edge there. Excellent. Right, you go and do that. And we will head over this way. There's my three tractors. We haven't used these at all yet. We must use these. I've got a cultivator sat back at the yard. But I'm thinking I don't want to use that cultivator. Because look, I got this one back here. Big old cultivator. And, I, you know, I think it would be quite good to go and use it. But I'm also thinking it would be good if we had one other cultivator as well. Um, let's just have a look in the shop a second. And we'll have a look at the cultivating technology. See what we've got. What options have we got? That one there is the 12 meter cultivator, which is absolutely great. I think the flexi coil is a little bit too big. I mean, it would be nice. I, I do like the idea of using that one. I'm actually thinking that this Bednar, for our bigger fields, this one here would be a very cool machine to use. $120,000. It is a bit on the pricey side, but I still think it would be a very cool machine to use. So I'm thinking that we could use that one, and we could stick that behind one of the other tractors. Ideally, I'd like to put that on the T9, because that's, of the articulated tractors, that one is actually my favourite. Um... But I'm thinking I will probably put it on the Challenger because I've not actually used the Challenger at all anywhere yet. Uh, whereas the T9, I have used it. I don't remember where I used it, but I'm sure I've used the T9 somewhere. So I'd quite like to get the... I, th I think we will. We will get that Bednar and we will put that one on the Challenger and then we'll bring that one over here and it can start cultivating all of this land up here that we've now ploughed. This tractor here, this John Deere, we've got it on the plough at the moment. I'll take this back to the yard once we finish this field and what I will most likely do is park this one up with the plough on it and we'll sort of leave this one for a while. I won't come back to using this tractor for quite some time because... This is our ploughing tractor, and I, I think this one will sort of be the dedicated ploughing tractor. It's very dedicated. It's very dedicated to all of its work. Let's go in here. I may or may not have just been getting a little bit of a picture of my John Deere and our plough there. I know that I have already done a picture of that somewhere, but uh, I figured one more wouldn't hurt. Go whizzing up round here. Bring you on up there. I've hardly got any left. We've just about finished this field now. Right, we've just got this little patch in the middle to finish off. And then this is finally done. Uh, absolutely massive, great big field here. I can remember what I said I was going to plant. I think it's wheat that we're doing in this one first, isn't it? Um, we're going to have a look at our plan in a second. Actually, I want to do that now. Let's, let's break this up. I'm getting a bit bored with just driving up and down the field. That's why. Uh, no, oh, there we go, rotation planner, right, so we've got grass, 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 corn, corn, grass, so we've got two, two crops of grass followed by two crops of corn, and then this one over here, this one is wheat, oat, canola, barley, canola, and then back to wheat again, so the oats come out at 0 0.95, but everything else has got a really nice boost on it, I quite like that, I think that works out very well, uh, barley. So why is canola down at 1.08 if it follows bana uh, the banali? Canola and banali, yeah. <laughs> why is it down at 1.08? Like, if you follow oats, it's at 1.2. Let's try and change this around a little bit. Oh, hang on. No, the oat is 0.95. Uh, I don't want... There, right, okay, so if I go there, canola, 1.08, and then I go back this way, oat, there, that one's 0.95, and then I want to go canola again, 1.08, so if I change the oat there to barley... Uh, oh, canola. 
wheat, canola, oats. You know what? I know what. Well, I know what we can do. Uh, soybean. Right. So, what do I need to put in front of soybeans to make that a better crop? It's not barley. I can leave it lying fallow. I don't really want to leave the field lying fallow for a year. I don't think that that is hugely beneficial to us. Oat there, cotton. Canola is 0.9. Okay, it doesn't appear to matter what I put in this field. If I lie, if it lies fallow for one year, then soybeans come up pretty good. I probably did all of this in my last recording session and I just don't remember it. So if I go there, so soybeans are out. We're not going to do soybeans. Corn, we're dealing with that over here. So I'm not going to have corn in this mix. Um, legume there. Oil seed, the sunflowers. Or canola. See, if you put, if you do put the soybeans in, then you can see here, you get a nice boost on the following crop in here. Like, um, barley goes 1.14. That's the same following the oil seed. Whereas, I put the canola in, it goes to 1.2. So, it's quite the boost after the soybeans. Uh, but I don't want to put soybeans in. So, I'm going to go canola there. So, wheat, canola, barley, canola, and then oats is another one that I wanted to put in. Like that, and then that drops that down to 0.95. So I, I did go through all of this before, didn't I? Um, so I'd either do it like that, or I go in here and I add in one more. Wheat, barley, oats, cotton, we're not doing canola there at 1.08. Sunflowers. Would be the same. We could do sun... Although, see, su the reason I haven't put sunflowers in a rotation is because we don't have the header for it. However, it could be good having that. So, wheat canola, barley canola, oat, sunflowers, and then back to wheat. I think we could try that. Because this is a nondescript sort of... It, it's... Alps panorama, so it's sort of on the edge of the mountains, but I've seen sunflowers growing in fields before, and that's here in the UK. So further south in Europe, there should be enough sunshine to grow sunflowers, and then we keep everything quite high on that list as well. Right. I, I know I already did go and look through the list, but I sort of wanted to have another look through the whole um, crop planner and see if we could plan a new crop. Um, I thought it'd be... Uh, good, because so we, we definitely need to start with wheat. Wheat is the one that we need to start with. So we need to make sure that for the summer, we've got a baler, we've got the combine. I mean, we can always go and lease some machinery. I would prefer not to lease machinery this time round. And yeah, I do have an excessive number of tractors on the farm. So we could always end up selling one of the tractors. But at the same time, I'm kind of reluctant to do that because as we progress... We're not going to need to buy more tractors. As we progress, what we can end up with is um, quite a lot of hired help working away in the fields. And that's this one of the reasons that I got quite so many tractors as I did. Is I just like the idea of having lots and lots of workers in the fields. Big, big scale, remember. Everything about this is supposed to be big scale. So we want to run as big a scale as we can. Let's go trotting off back down here. Lower you down in. We've got our other tractor working away in the field over there. It's just about done with the planting. So we just need to do a couple circuits around the edge of the field. And then that's done. I'm looking at the field over there. And I can see two distinct lines from where it started up again with this week's recording session. And where it left off with the last one. And we've had updates with seasons and a few other bits. So there will let's just check the map a minute and see if that's done anything so i want to go here growth i've got yo know, that's because we've got grass there so i need to show the grass like this so there's there's the grass and then we go here so we've got this this is all planted here and so is that and then we go to soil composition over here we need 
well, I don't think we need to put lime on grass. I don't think that makes any difference to it, does it? Uh, so then we go like that, and oh, there's no difference on that. That's mostly done. We could do with putting a bit of fertilizer on here. Wait. We've gone back to three fertilizer stages. I only just realized that. There's three fertilizer stages there, not two. Now, that's that must be a seasons option, but is there another option in here for changing that? Like, now that we've got the seasons on, let's, let's go and have a look through. Invert Y, um, interactive zones, areas, monies. Technically, we should be in euros, I suppose. Let's go into this one. There's nothing about the fertilizer in there. Uh, there was another thing that I was looking at, which was to do with... Mods, you've got seasons here, but there was a nut right grabbing mods. No seasons effects maintenance. Hut to the left of the clock and the upper right displays relevant to seas. That's seasons there. Buy the tool in the store, the measurement tool. Uh, there was there was something else I think which was about the um, the mod that I've got. It's something to do with the uh, like advanced vehicle thing. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but it's where I've got the four wheel drive down in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, seven, eight, and nine on the number pad. If I press seven, you can see I've got the diff lock on on the front wheels. Eight diff lock on the back wheels. You should not engage and disengage diff lock while you're driving, by the way, or if you do, not while you're turning a corner at least. Um, it's, it's better to do it while you're not driving. Um, and then 9 turns the four-wheel drive on and off. So there's four-wheel drive off. And there's four-wheel drive on. It did make a bit of a difference going up the hill, I think. But anyway, that's, that's what that is. So you've got diff locks and you've got four-wheel drive on and off as well. That you can go and use, which is, I mean, it's quite a cool thing. It's a nice little feature to be able to go and do that. It's probably not something that I would use very much, though. I've got to be honest. I don't think I would use it all that much. It's, um, it's just one of those things that I wouldn't have personally installed it. It just happens to have been installed because it's part of the, um, it's, it's one of the, the mods that's used on the multiplayer server on the live streams that I do on the multiplayer. Um, that's, uh, uh, I, those of you, I do get people asking if they can come along and join it, and can I add them to the list, and so on, um, you, well, you, you got to be in a great book of names to be able to join, um, but beyond that, it's not my decision, I, I have no say in who joins the multiplayer live streams, that is on the Discord, you need to join the Discord, and then the people that organise that are Jimmy J and Smoodalini, they are the ones that organize the multiplayer live stream. Right? They, um, I sort of said right from the beginning, I don't have time to organize and set up a multiplayer live stream. They said they would do it. And they do. They, they do this every week. They, they set it all up. They, they have the map. They make sure that all the mods are installed and running. And they keep the... They decide everything that happens. They decide who's there, who does what, how it all goes on. They do everything behind the scenes. They are the unsung heroes of the entire process. It's nothing whatsoever to do with me. All I do is I turn up and drive the tractor around and um, smile for the camera. That's that's my job. Uh, they, they do the actual hard work behind the scenes. So if you want to join the multiplayer live stream, I don't see why you can't, but it's not my decision. It's nothing to do with me. If you want to join the multiplayer live stream, you must join the Discord. First of all, you have to be on Discord to be able to join it. Um, and then you've also, you, you need to speak to Smoodalini or Jimmy J. There is a whole channel on the Discord um, all about the multiplayer live stream. And in the pinned information there, it tells you what you need to know about it and how you go about signing up for it and so on. And they're currently taking bookings. I don't know quite when this episode is going to go live but uh, they're probably still taking bookings as uh, uh, you know, while you're watching this video there's probably still bookings being taken 
Um, but head over to the Discord if you really want to join the multiplayer live stream, and you can take a look. It, if it's closed for this time, well, then you'd be able to sort of hang around, and you can join us the next time round instead. Um, but yes, there is the multiplayer live stream. You can join it. I have had people asking me. Uh, but it's not my decision who joins and and so on and so forth. So you, you do need to join the Discord and speak to the ones in charge about that. And we are now done. There is our field. is all ploughed. I'm going to turn off the allow create fields bit in a minute. That is all done. All of those acres of land are now officially ploughed. I'm not going to do any more ploughing now. I've had enough of the ploughing. We're going to leave that. We've got grass being planted down the bottom there we've got loads of grass being planted so i'm just going to bring this one out over here like this and i'm going to fold this bad boy up that field there that next one to us i did want to plow that one up but i'm not going to do that this year and we'll leave that one that's going to be one of the ones we will definitely do next year and then um for this year we'll probably well i don't know if we will actually cut that one or not we might do because of the length of the grass over here like the the grass fields that we're planting at the moment they're going to take a little bit longer to actually establish aren't they it's going to be a minute or two before they're quite ready so the grass in that field to our left uh, to our right sorry uh that's going to be ready long before the grass in these fields right here is ready so i think for you know because of that it might be a good idea to um, yeah, well, we, we, we leave the field. We, we, I'm, I'm just wondering whether I should actually go and plow it. No, I definitely won't, because that one will be the first grass we use. Then we'll be able to get some cows. We can put the cows right into that shed there, and they can go and do their thing. So this tractor and the plow is finished for now. We're, we're not using it anymore for a little while. So, so long as there's room, I'm going to back the plow into that shed right there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We get you into that shed there, over here, like that, and I'm going to plant the tractor right next to it. Back you in there, keep going, like that, there, and stop, right. Unhitch that bad boy there, and then we come out and back into the shed right next to it, over here. There we go. And a little bit further, and there, that is beautiful. Right. We're not going to use this one for a little while, like I said. We will leave that one there in the shed. That's our plowing tractor, and there's our plow. Those two can stay there. We've got the Duck Zorley edition of the Class Zerian. They have actually offered me a um, uh, one without the Duck Zorley tags all over it but i thought why not we'll leave that one on there because doug zorley is one of the admins on my discord server so um and he, he's got this channel of his own that he runs and gtx modding who by the way i did just recently find out is the guy i had there was a road train pack in fs17 I loved that mod. It was absolutely spectacular. It was a beautiful, incredible mod. That was his handiwork. That was his baby, that was. GTX Modding made the road train pack. So he made this tractor. He, he updated his tractor. He removed unnecessary clunk from the mod. Um, and he, he made it look all pretty. And he, he did this. this. This is his handiwork. So I'm going to leave it exactly as he's done it. And it'd be quite cool if there was actually a GTX modding sticker on here as well. Um, well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time... Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.